Did you know that once upon a time all bears had tails? It's true. Do you know why bears don't have tails anymore? Well, it seems that one fine spring day, Bruin Bear, who had a very nice long tail, was walking through the forest, looking for something to eat. He had slept all winter long, and he was very hungry now. He looked in the beehives for honey, but he found none. And he looked under the rocks for ants, but he found none. And he looked in the rivers for fish, but the rivers were frozen, and he couldn't see through the ice. He soon became very discouraged. He came to a halt and began to cry. Fish, fresh fish. Bruin ran through the forest, following the smell of fresh fish. There they were, a whole string of them, stretched across the back of the sneaking, slinking, snickering fox. Good day, Bruin, said the fox. You look hungry. And the fox smiled, for he knew that Bruin hadn't eaten all winter long. I am hungry. How did you catch those fish? Could I catch some? Certainly, said the fox. It's easy. This morning I was looking for something to eat near your cave. When I saw that large lake covered with ice, I knew if I could just get out in the middle, I would have myself some fish. So I stopped, took a deep breath, and ran for the lake. Faster and faster, and when I reached the edge, I jumped, slid to the middle, and came to a halt. Then I sawed a hole in the ice, and lowered my tail into the cold water. It felt good on that bushy brown tail, and it wasn't very long before I felt the bite of baby fish, brother and sister fish, mother and father fish, and king fish. I waited until I could feel many, many fish biting on my tail. Then I began to pull, and pull, and pull, but there were so many fish I couldn't budge my tail. I pulled harder and harder, and with one last great pull, I yanked the whole line of fish out onto the ice. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be on my way, for I want to eat these fish before they spoil in the sun. And Bruin watched the fox slink off into the forest. Bruin started off for the lake feeling much better now. When he imagined eating the fish, his stomach would growl. When he reached the edge of the lake, he stopped, took a few steps back, took a deep breath, and ran for the lake. Faster and faster, and when he reached the edge, he jumped, slid to the middle, and skidded to a halt. Then, like the fox, he sawed a hole in the ice and lowered his tail into the cold water. At first, the icy water felt cool and refreshing, but though Bruin waited a very long time, he never did feel the bite of a single baby fish, a single brother or sister fish, a single mother or father fish, or a single kingfish. 
The water grew colder and colder. Less and less it moved about his tail, for it had begun to freeze. And before Bruin knew it, his tail was frozen solid. Bruin became frightened. He began to pull and pull and pull, but he couldn't budge his tail. It was frozen in the ice. He pulled harder and harder, and with one last great pull, <coughs> his tail broke off. And that is why today you may see a tail on a mare. You may see a tail on a hare. You may see a tail on a whale or a quail, but you never see a tail on a bear. A tail is all there is to an eel. A storyteller's tail sounds real. The beaver's tail's a hammer. The otter has a swatter. Pull a pigtail and you'll hear a squeal. You may look in the northeast, south or west. You may look most anywhere. You may find a bull or a moose or a cat or a rat. Or a mouse or a grouse with a tail But you never see a tail on a bear No, you never see a tail on a bear